Uh, hey, can I help you? Good morning. I just popped in to run a test on your backflow preventer device. Name's Bob. Backflow Bob. Need to learn about backflow? That's no problem for backflow Bob. A test of my what now? Your backflow preventer. You see, backflow happens when clean water in your pipes starts to flow in the wrong direction. And as a result, you could introduce contaminated water into your drinking water. But you see this little guy right here? He's designed to stop that from happening. Wait, so without that backflow preventer... Got it. Dirty water could end up in my drinking water? Which is exactly why I'm here, to make sure your backflow preventer is working like it should. You still seem a little concerned. Maybe it's time for a little backflow know-how. No, that's not really... Backflow occurs when water flows in the opposite direction from its intended path, which happens because of either back siphonage or back pressure. Imagine your town experiences a water main break. This can cause a sudden loss in supply pressure. And this causes what? Back siphonage, when a vacuum effect pulls water backward through the system, bringing with it anything improperly connected to the water system. Cleaning products, chemicals, you name it. But fortunately, we have backflow preventers for exactly this reason, to stop backflow before it becomes a problem. The devices act like a one-way gate, allowing water to flow forward, but never back. So, if there is a loss of forward pressure, the backflow preventer will close and prevent any contamination. Okay, but what does backflow have to do with my water heater? This is where that second term, back pressure, comes into play. Anytime the downstream pressure becomes greater than the upstream pressure, you have a risk for back pressure. For example, water that's heated in your boiler or water heater expands. And in a confined space, that water has to go somewhere. That change in pressure can force water and any pollutants back into the potable water supply. And without a backflow preventer, that stuff could end up in my water? Gross. Yep. See this? Cross connection central. A cross connection is any point where water could come into contact with liquids not meant for human consumption, like fertilizer seeping back into your water supply. If backflow occurred here, that liquid could get sucked into your plumbing like drinking through a straw. Exactly. <clears throat> Which is why we use a two-pronged system to prevent backflow incidents. Containment and isolation. Containment protects the public water supply by stopping backflow where it enters your home. Once your town or city delivers your water, they don't want it back. And containment prevents any backflow. Isolation, on the other hand, means placing backflow prevention devices at potential cross connections throughout your home. Here, toss this bad boy on your hose spigot. That's a hose bib vacuum breaker. You're welcome. Okay, but if backflow is such a big risk, why aren't more people talking about it? That's exactly the problem. Homeowners across the country don't even realize that backflow can happen. And without proper testing, everyone's water is at risk. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why would anyone not test their backflow? Why, indeed. I don't want my water at risk. Think of the children. Someone has to do something. Hey, Jim. You ever hear of backflow? Back what? Backflow. Well, I guess that's my cue. Oh, hey. I've got this one. Go get him, champ. Yeah. Backflow, man. I just, I, I just heard about it from this guy. Protecting our drinking water is everyone's responsibility. Share this message with friends, family, and neighbors.